Greetings. I decided to do a little filming today because something I've wanted to do for a long time I finally did and uh, it turned out better than I could have hoped for. Um, near me is the foundation for Francisco Torrent Guasp, who is the um, medical doctor who I did a video about uh, called Helical Hearts, Petrified Organs, and um, Synchronicities. And Torrent Guasp, uh, he's no longer alive, but he is uh, really the person who gave us more knowledge about the human heart than any other person in history. And um, I made some discoveries about the stones, the heart stones, which I've done a number of videos about, that tied into his, his findings. And I didn't realize it uh, as I was doing the initial videos. And then at one point I, I watched him dissecting a heart and opening up and unraveling what he calls the myocardial ventricular band. And then as he rolled it back up, I could see that there were certain overlaps in the heart where the the sulcus of the of the different parts of the heart met and when i saw that i had this aha experience because i realized that i'd seen the exact same lines in a number of the heart rocks that i had already gathered at that point so it's taken me about a over a year to work up the courage but i decided to because my, my spanish isn't so good but i uh called up the foundation and i spoke to the wife of Torrent Guasp, and I told her that it was a real honor to speak to her and that uh, I was a real fan of her husband's work. And, um, and then I was curious if she knew of any cardiologists or anybody who was familiar with Torrent's work who, uh, or Paco, Paco's work, who um, I might be able to talk to. And so she put me in touch with her son, uh, Junior, also known as Paco Torrent Guasp. And, uh, and I called him up and spoke to him and told him I had uh, made some discoveries that I thought he would find very interesting that related to his father's work. I didn't go into too much detail because I was afraid he might think I was a, a crackpot. <laughs> and uh, I told him that I lived in the next town over, which just happened to be by chance. And um, so he was coming here today. And so he's due here in about a half an hour and I'm going to show him what I'm about to show you. And um, so this is the first time since I've been gathering these stones that I've actually laid them all out and categorized them. And you can see the, the collection that I've got here. So I'm just going to switch the... And here we go. So that is the waiting room for my office. And um, this is the collection of of stones that I've gathered over the last about year and a half or so, closer to two years, I suppose, by now. And um, before you think this guy's a complete lunatic, uh, I've, I've gone through these, these stones in, in great detail in a number of videos, specifically these here, which are um, showing a great number of anatomical correlations with hearts. And I talk about how and why I think that could be, and then I show the, the anatomy as well. So these are the bigger ones, and the bigger ones uh, tend to, to be a little bit more fleshy. This one's pink, that one's uh, reddish. The colors come out even more when you wet them. The, the, the bigger the rock, the more likely it is to have uh, openings, and those openings are the blood vessels. When they have the two here, with the line between, which is called the isthmus, that is the uh, openings to the pulmonary arteries. And then sometimes they'll even show the, the coronary artery. This is the coronary sulcus, the fatty portion between the, the atrium and the ventricle. Uh, I've done a number of videos showing, showing these, but you can see that, uh, that they're, they're complete rocks. They're not broken, except for this one, which is a little bit broken on the end and that would have been rounded off before it broke off and you can see it's exposed the the ventricle here so i've got those these are bigger but they're they're not showing the actual openings but they still have indentations at the top and and then here we have next size down 
you can see the, the curved underside. That happens because when the heart dies, it goes into contraction. So you get both a twist and you get a curving in. And that's why we get these, these harp-shaped stones that look like bicycle seats. And, um, and then they'll also, this is something I discovered recently, they'll also have a little twist oftentimes at the bottom. And that's because of the spiral fibers of the heart. So when it contracts, it actually does this kind of a motion. So you can see that, that some of these really have that, that curve to them. Others are showing the, the remains of the blood vessels. These are showing what are known as the, the intraventricular sulcuses where the, the hearts fold over and the different parts of the heart meet. And that creates the, the chambers. They're not actually, uh, you know, it's not a, a four chamber pump as we were taught and Torrent Guaspa shows that. These are, are broken. This is showing indentations. As they come up to rest against something else that's hard, they can get these little bends in them that can't be easily explained away with just erosion or chipping. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if he thinks I'm a nutcase or if, if he can recognize the pattern. It's a little hard to see this because of all the stuff underneath, but it's exactly the same themes reoccurring. over and over and over again. These are elongated. That may be a brain. That may be lung tissue. Those may be kidneys. <laughs> yeah, so he's gonna be here shortly and I'm gonna lead him through this collection and find out whether he thinks I'm a lunatic or whether he thinks there's something to it. And I'm hoping that he might have contact with some cardiologists who have access to CAT scan and uh, perhaps even uh, doing something like uh, an XRF analysis, uh, spectrography. And um, yeah, the... Uh, the different laboratories that I've that I've contacted on my own have rejected my requests because they'll only take human specimens. So I've tried to go a little further with this and get some kind of proof that would be more conclusive in the eyes of a skeptical scientist. Um, but so far, what I have is a is a, a phenomenon. This is definitely a reoccurring, repeatable pattern that I don't believe is is uh, easily explained away through just erosion, that rocks are, are breaking off of bigger structures and then rolling around in river bottoms and then they're just taking on, you know, this, this shape with so many different specific correlations. See the indentations at the top there? And then you've got that curve, that little knife edge, wider on one side, oftentimes on the thicker side there will be the openings to the pulmonary arteries as well. So that's my collection, two years of, of walking around and these things jump out at me at the most <laughs> synchronistic moments. And, uh, oh, here's the big one right here. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Pulmonary artery opening. The tapering in that happens with contraction, the curved the curved underside, and then as I turn it over, I've got the the aortal opening, and there's even there's even a, a ventricular sulcus. So it's uh, it's scalable and it's reproducible. And as I've said before, people from all over the world have been sending me pictures and finding these, and um, and yeah, so. We'll see what uh, Mr. Gwasp has to say. Hope you're all well. Take care. Bye-bye. I wanted to give you all a channel update 
as it's been nearly a year since I published my last video, a lot of people have been wondering where I disappeared to and whether I'd continue to produce more videos. Several of you have sent kind, encouraging, and inspiring messages, and I'm extremely grateful for them. Thank you. I'd like to start by giving an apology to those of you who have been eagerly awaiting the follow-up to my Petrified Titans and Organs Part 2 video. I had originally planned to release Part 3 within a couple weeks, but shortly after that, the world went full-blown Twilight Zone, and I was sidetracked, to say the least. Several of you have sent emails asking questions and requesting interviews. Again, I apologize. I've been in a sort of hibernation, extremely slow to respond. Uh, but I do promise I'll get back to you soon. Uh, there's no need to tell you what a strange year this has been. <laughs> Few have been untouched by world events. And as an American living abroad, it's been painful to watch the U.S. Constitution getting trounced like never before. And to witness a technocratic takeover in real time ushered in under the guise of a medical crisis has been nothing short of horrifying. I personally have spent loads of time over the last year absorbing information, trying to get a grip on what's really happening and to understand where it's all headed. I also took a time out, choosing to focus on my own health and do my best to enjoy the present, spending as much time in nature and away from the mask wearers as possible. The censorship in recent times has been on a scale I've never seen before. Um, the vast majority seem to welcome it with open arms, which I'll never understand. The right to free speech is utterly essential in a free society, and it seems to be disappearing at warp speed. A large number of channels that I've followed for years were taken down. Two of them, SGT Report and Sarah Westall, um, totaled nearly a million subscribers. They both conducted interviews with me last year, those two interviews combined received nearly 150,000 views and thousands of comments, the majority of which were very positive towards the research I presented. Sean and Sarah are fantastic independent journalists, and I have immense respect for them and their courage. Sadly, both of their channels were taken down by YouTube without warning in the widespread censorship purge that occurred just prior to the election. While not exactly censorship, a couple of days ago, the most recent video I produced, Petrified Titans and Organs Part 2, The How and Why, received a copyright complaint and has been temporarily taken down. It's a bummer because that video alongside with Part 1 is the most concise summary of my discoveries and my theories about the findings. I've contested the complaint on fair usage grounds, but it may take as much as 30 days before I receive a verdict. I do have the option of removing the clip in question, but it would make a portion of the video rather confusing. So, in the meantime, I've backed up my channel to Odyssey, BitChute, Library, and uh, all with the same channel name. I'll provide links in the notes. You can also find SGT Report and Sarah Westall on those platforms. Here in Spain, like most everywhere, we've experienced major lockdowns. And while things appear to be opening up again for the moment, uh, for the last year, there have been extreme restrictions of movement and a stop to many of life's most enjoyable activities. More recently, we've seen massive numbers of business closures and the economy seems to be teetering on the brink of destruction. My family and I are extremely lucky to be healthy and to live in such a beautiful place, but nevertheless, these have been truly trying and stressful times for everyone. A step outside is an immediate reminder that things are anything but normal. Uh, nearly 100% of the people are wearing masks, and they're even mandated for people who are exercising. It's insane to see runners and cyclists wearing masks. It's government-mandated insanity, in my opinion. We've also had a long-standing 10 p.m. curfew. It's like being a teenager all over again. Uh, and until recently, all the restaurants were forced to be closed except for takeaway. Last year, I was forced to close my business for 10 weeks, and every day I see another new business closure. Having family spread across three countries and two continents with travel so severely hindered 
has complicated our lives and made planning for the future anything but easy. Recognizing my income could so easily be taken away from me, I decided to reevaluate how I was spending my time and focus instead on finishing a long-standing book project. But I've dragged my feet, and it's taken me years to complete, as I'm not a particularly fast worker. Um, also, the longer I was away from the video production, the harder it was for me to get back to it. I've struggled with motivation and quite honestly began to be somewhat timid as I've been presenting information that, if correct, challenges some of the cornerstones of mainstream geology. I'm no expert in these matters, and for a while I didn't feel up to the task of meeting the floods of criticism that will likely come if this information really begins to spread. Not surprisingly, the more attention my research received, the more it began to attract trolls. One larger channel made a video mocking the research, which was seen by nearly 200,000 people, attracting a two-week wave of negative comments. I intend to address his criticisms in an upcoming video. Producing videos like my last two were monumental challenges and required a huge number of hours. For several months, my research has stalled. I felt I had little new information to present and didn't want to be like a broken record repeating the same things over and over again in video after video. Skeptics and trolls have been eagerly awaiting what they deem to be real scientific evidence as the empirical findings and astonishing number of anatomical correlations I've presented are, in their minds, nothing more than pareidolia and cherry-picking. I'd planned to do further testing on the heart stones. The initial idea was to do a CAT scan of the best specimens in hopes of getting 3D imaging that might reveal the internal structures and features that correspond with heart anatomy. I don't know if it would work, but it'd be interesting to try. The problem was that the labs refused to allow testing on any non-human subjects. After a number of phone calls and emails trying to get them to make an exception, I gave up. Soon, uh, I intend to contact veterinarians in the region who may have the same equipment and less resistance. Another form of testing I hope to perform is known as X-ray fluorescence or spectroscopy. This technique gives a breakdown of the constituent elements by percentage. If these are indeed hearts, as the empirical evidence and logical consistency would seem to suggest, then there should be statistically significant correlations between the elements found in the stones and in fleshy hearts. Last year, I took up contact with the geology department of a university in a nearby city in hopes of conducting such tests, but they were in the process of closing down due to the virus and uh, remained closed for several months for summer break and then additionally for the lockdowns. Travel between towns and regions has also been restricted and with all the weirdness I quite frankly just lost my steam. Anyway, that's the update I wanted to share on all that's been going on. There's a lot more to cover including some exciting new findings and of course a telling of my recent meeting with Paco Guasp the son of the legendary cardiologist. I hope you're all well during these trying times. Be well and keep your hearts soft. They work better that way. So, uh... Here I am in a mossy moss. See that? And uh, I just wanted to uh, share this entertaining moment with you as we come in. You're gonna, uh, oh, look, there's a rock. Oh, but it's just kind of a round rock, right? Yeah, unless you get in at this angle. Look at the size of that baby right there. See that? And look at that indentation right at the top. And look at how it curves under on the underside there.